Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Behind me, 2008 Mitsubishi Lancer. We're gonna be replacing the starter motor. Now, according to the manual, the intake manifold does not have to come off. We should be able to slide it out from underneath without pulling the manifold. So, let's get started. We're gonna start by disconnecting our negative battery cable. Pull that off and just set it aside. Then we're gonna pull off our intake boot. 10 millimeter up here, and then 10 millimeter down below. We have our breather hose, we'll take it off back here. Just one clamp, there we go, pull, perfect. Now we can separate this, there we go. Then off the throttle body, let's give it a good twist, there we go. That gives us access to one starter bolt from up here. It's a 14 millimeter, we're gonna use a shallow socket and a long ratchet. Let me show you that setup. We're gonna go right under here, there we go. Then we'll get our socket on, perfect. And that coolant hose going to the throttle body, we're on our side of it. That gives us enough room to ratchet. Now we won't get a long swing, but it will be enough to just wiggle it and that'll slowly back it out. All right, here we go. Perfect. All right. Now I don't think I can get my electric ratchet in there, but let's see. Nope, no beans. See if I can get my hand in there. Okay, I got a couple fingers on it. Now I'm able to back it out. I'm gonna remove that coolant hose real quick. It might give us a little more room. So we just have a hose clamp. I'm gonna clamp off that hose so we don't lose a bunch of coolant. We'll still lose a little, but this will minimize how much. I'll just take my pair of pliers, get that clamp off. Let me show you closer how I have that. So just like that, the clamp is resting on the metal pipe, and then we'll pull that hose off. With an angled pick, I'm gonna get in between the hose and the pipe just to break it free. It'll make it easier for it to come off. Okay, now we can pull on it. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that, tuck it down, set it aside. So now I can get my hand in there really easily. Let me see if I can get my electric ratchet in there. Still not quite. Wait, wait. Sweet, I am able to get my electric ratchet in there. So that's the ticket, pulling off that coolant hose. I only lost a few dribbles. I'm gonna buzz this out. Make sure I'm not backing into something and can't get my ratchet back out. Okay, let's pull that off. All right, so my electric ratchet got a little trapped because of where that bolt is. It came out a little too far, so the head of my ratchet's tucked up against the bell housing of the transmission. No big deal. Let's go underneath, let's get that bottom bolt for the starter off, and then as the starter moves, that bolt will move as well, and give us more room to pull this out. Let's hop underneath. Underneath, we wanna remove our skid plate. It's a series of 10 millimeter bolts and a couple of clips. Once we have those off, it gives us sweet access to our lower bolt. Instead of taking the whole skid plate off, I was able to just bend this down and get my hand up in there, but we got it. Let me show you the bolt. So right there is our bolt. We have access to it. Let me show you that setup. So there we are with a ratchet on it, and my medium ratchet just barely makes it in between our cooling fan. If that's enough leverage for you, then we could just use that, grab on it, and pull. Mm. Whew. It's not too tight, but when you don't have much leverage, it can feel pretty tight. Okay, now we'll just keep loosening this little by little. Hopefully, eventually, it'll get to the point where we can just use our hand. It would've been nice to have my electric ratchet. Sorry, I'm moving around so much. All right, there's the bolt. I got it. Perfect. That's it. Now let's push our starter out just a little. We'll get my electric ratchet back. All right, there's our starter. My hand's probably gonna be in your way, but let me just push it back. Okay, nice. Now let me get my ratchet. There we go. That's all we needed. Yay, now I can get this off the rest of the way. Should be able to come off just by hand. Nice, there's the bolt. So let's go back under. We have to pull off our positive cable and our S-terminal. Okay, hopefully that's a decent enough viewing angle. We're gonna slide this down. Gonna have to twist it a little. No matter how you slice it, this thing is not coming out. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to loosen up our manifold after all. On the bottom, there is just one bolt there. And then over here, we'll just take off one of those bolts. And that'll be the two brackets underneath holding it on. Then we'll go up top, loosen our main bolts. All right, up top, we're gonna take off this two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, we want a really long extension for this 12 millimeter bolts. 
I'm not gonna pull them out at first. I'm just gonna loosen them up, see if that's enough. Pull this out. Then on this side, there's a 12 millimeter side bolt. It's a tricky little guy. Okay. There's a throttle body bracket bolt that we cannot get to. It's kind of tucked back and behind. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull off the throttle body. There are four 10 millimeter bolts. Let's get those with a magnet. Okay. There we go. Let's see if we can get that one bolt. There, let me show you. I think that's the one bolt holding us up. And then our intake manifold can slide out. Okay, so right behind here, that 12 millimeter bolt. So we'll pull that off, and then hopefully our intake manifold bottom can just swing out just a little. We only need like an inch. So let me get that bolt off real quick. Get that with a magnet. Now let's see. There we go. Let's go back underneath. Hey guys, round two. Okay, let's move our throttle body and our starter motor. Because the camera's in the way I'm using our pry bar for assistance, I have it to the left of the starter motor. I'm just using it to push on the intake manifold. Just a little. No, doesn't look like it's enough. Close, but not close. Almost got it. And we are so close, it doesn't make sense. There we go. Got it. Manual lied to me. This isn't working. You know why this doesn't work? Because we can't get access to the S-terminal or the power. So that's a bunch of baloney. The manual is lying. Well, let's pull off our intake manifold. So the ones with nuts, we want to make sure we get the washer behind it. There we go. And if you drop it, that's okay. Once the manifold is out, then we can find it under there. Now, I don't know if this has to come out all the way or if it just has to be brought forward. That's a good question. We'll soon find out. We got this here, pop that through. All of these, we can just pop them through. There we go. Okay. Got our injector electrical connectors. Just pinch and pull. This stay here, there's just a tab. You pull forward on the tab and then push that whole bracket up. Okay, got another electrical connector down here. Again, pinch and pull. Okay. Let's go back in. And I'll leave this for now. We have this connector, pinch and pull. This here underneath, we'll get that. Push on one side, see if it'll pop through. There we go. Okay, we'll get that electrical connector here. Perfect. Can loosen this one. Okay, can loosen this here too. All right, disconnect it. There we go. We can get these here. I think they're already loose. We just have to undo it from the hose. There we go. That's, that's kind of loose there. How can I pull this back? Okay, so we still have our EGR pipe, 12 millimeter. Let me show you that a little closer. Right there's the pipe, two 12 millimeter bolts. Now it's a 90 degree pipe, so you can also take it off right there as well. And that's up to you. So whatever's easiest to get to, it really doesn't matter. Pick those up, should be most of it. And we have our fuel line we can disconnect. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Well, that will take a pick. We'll pull off this red tab. We wanna pull that red tab off of the fuel line. You can take a pick on this side and pop this up and then do the bottom and push it down and then slowly work it. And then now that it's up, it reveals this little slot and we can get it the rest of the way off. There we go. And that opens up inside, that's a lock tab. So now the fuel line is ready to pull off. We'll make sure we have safety goggles and a rag to catch any fuel that may come out. Can't find my glasses, but we'll wrap it with a rag. And we'll just push it back. There we go. 
So some did squirt out a little. Nice, and then we'll just set that back. We'll put a rag under it, catch any dribbles. And we have this hose right here, this big fat one. So you can use a pick to get under that hose and break it free. There we go. Hopefully this isn't a bunch of coolant. Yep, there it goes. Okay. Before we get this hose all the way off, we're gonna want a coolant catch pan underneath. And we have these two hoses here. This should be pretty easy to get off. There's a little pick. Okay. I think everything that could go wrong with a repair has gone wrong. There we go. All right, this is all the farther I'm going. I'm not pulling this all the way up, just pulling it out the way I have it. We can get in right through here. Right there is our main power feed. There's a boot right there. You just pop that little boot cap off and then you have access to the S-terminal. That's that tiny wire right next to the boot. I already pulled the S-terminal off. So now I'm gonna get in with a little short ratchet, 12 millimeter and pop that off. Then we'll finish getting the starter from underneath. Okay, so I'm just gonna feel it. There's the boot, pull it back, put my 12 on like that. All right, got it. Now probably once I get that off the rest of the way, the starter will drop to the ground. Okay, there's the nut. That's our main power feed. I'm gonna go underneath. I'm gonna get that starter the rest of the way out. Should be home free at this point. All right, there it is. Came out pretty easy. Yeah, right, that was a chore. Let's match up the new one and make sure they're the same. All right, brand new starter right out of the box. I do recommend going with a new starter instead of a remanufactured starter. For some reason, new starters for these are hard to find, but I do have a link in the description for a brand new one. All right, let's go underneath. We'll snake this in, and then we'll put on our main power and plug in our S-terminal. Put it in like this. There, hopefully that'll stay in place for us. Then we'll go up top, get our main power feet on, and our S-terminal, then we'll come back down and put it in the bell housing. Reach my hand down there, I can see it. Just get it started. Now all we can do is our best for a torque. Throw that on the screen and we'll get it tightened up. Toss our S-terminal on, make sure our cap is on or our boot is over that power cable. Well, that's it. Let's throw everything back together. I think our hardest part is gonna be our EGR. We have this gasket that needs to go back on. Let's find our EGR bolts. Put this back on. We have our studs that has to go over. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to get this tucked back under there. I'm gonna pull this away a little. Let's see, how am I gonna do that? There we go. Just fish it back behind there. I'm just gonna push this forward and squish it. And hopefully I can get one bolt lined up and started. Got it. So you can line it up with a flashlight. Just get that one hole lined up. There we go. And then once you either have the top or the bottom lined up in a few threads with one bolt, and it's easy to get the second bolt in. I'm gonna put this coolant hose on. And that'll stop my coolant drippage. There we go. Tighten this down. Yeah, some of this will be hard to torque, but I'll throw the torque specs on the screen. That way you can do your best to guess. Let's get this clamp back on. Get our fuel line back on. So you just push it on all the way, then we lock it with our red tab. If the red tab won't lock, then it needs to be pushed on further. And then if it came out of its little holder in the back, we can just put it back in. Okay, we got these hoses. Let's see, before I get carried away with those hoses, we can put this throttle body bracket bolt down. Start it by hand. And we can put in our manifold bolts. Our washers, we can sneak in through the side. Okay, there's one there. You can even put the nut on from the side. Yeah, that's helpful. Do our other washer all the way back. That bolt on, our nut. Nice. Before we tighten that down, we'll get our side bolt here lined up, our little side bracket bolt. Torque our manifold bolt starting in the middle. Nice, now we got these hoses we can put on. This bottom one did not have a clamp. Put our throttle body on. 
Before putting our throttle body on, we're gonna go ahead and get that upper bolt in for our starter. It gives us a lot more room for our fat hands. Now we need to go underneath and just rotate the starter a little, get it lined up. Got it started. I'm gonna go underneath and just put that one bolt in. That one's an easy one underneath. So while I was under there, I tightened up that lower starter bolt and got our two bracket bolts on. There was a little bracket for this and a little bracket for our throttle body. So I got those two bolts on. That buttons up everything from down below so we can go ahead and put our skid plate back on. Now we'll tighten up this top starter bolt. I'll throw the torque spec on the screen for this as well. Now we can throw our throttle body on. We'll hand thread them in. All right, we'll snug and torque these down. We also have our 10 mil bolt here holding this little pipe bracket on. We have our throttle body coolant hose. Pull that off. Didn't even need it really. Should have drained the coolant ahead of time. Well, now we know. Plug all our electrical connectors in. Oh, this was supposed to get bolted to that throttle body. Let's back that one out. Plug this back in. All our electrical connectors. Put our harness stays back in. Got all this over here we can plug back in. Okay, just double check. Just make sure everything's plugged in. Just soak up some of that coolant. Well, there we go. Let's put our intake boot back on. There we go. Make sure it's sitting all the way down. Put it over here. Okay, 10 mil for our clamps. You don't want to over tighten our clamps because these wire clamps can actually cut into the boot. They're just nice and snug. All right, I'll plug this back in. All right, now our engine cover, and we're ready to start it. Nice, the fruit of our labor. Car's back up and running. Mitsubishi, what's up? I was excited to get this starter motor out without removing the manifold, but apparently you can't. Now I didn't have to remove the manifold completely out, but it does have to be disassembled enough to pull it away from the engine. Maybe your Lancer is different, I don't know, but this Lancer didn't cooperate without pulling that manifold off. So you live and learn, this is a tough job, but not impossible. Book time was a little over an hour. In reality, it took me about three hours to do this whole job. So not too bad, but more work than anticipated. So if you have any questions, comment down below. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, See you on the next one.